Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And so, and so, and so on this special occasion, amen, our vision day preacher for today is, is world renowned. He's famous, amen. He's famous locally and nationally and internationally. And it is awesome pleasure for us to have him here with us today. He's an author. He's a preacher. He's a multifaceted, multi-talented young man. And I'm so very grateful to have with him. I want you to stand to your feet and put your hands together for none other than Dr. Eddie Connor. Give God some praise and glory for him. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise all over the house. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise. Come on, that'd be all right if it was for me. But I said give Jesus a praise. Come on, you ought to go back down memory lane and think about what he brought you from. Think about how he saved you. Come on, you got a testimony today. You could be dead in the mortuary, but you're alive in the sanctuary. Let everything that has breath. Come on, y'all too cute to praise him. Come on, if you know he brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light, then open up your mouth and give him a praise. Come on, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he's worthy to be praised. Come on, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Sickness has to bow, depression has to bow, suicide has to bow. Oh yeah. My Bible tells me that he dwells in the midst of praise. He literally inhabits the praises of his people. Listen, if you're expecting God to do something small in your life, give him a small praise. But after all I've been through just this year alone, I'm expecting God to do something big in my life. And a big God is deserving of a big praise. Come on. Don't fool me now. Give God a big praise. Oh, I believe if you bless him in his house, by the time you get back to your house, it'll already be worked out. The son already be right back in his mind. The daughter already be right back where she's supposed to be. The finances won't be fickle if you praise him in his, his house. <laughs> oh, we got to move on. Listen, you don't have to take anybody's hand today. You don't have to hold a neighbor's hand. All you have to do is hold to God's unchanging hand as we have the word of prayer today. The Bible says we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And so he feels what we feel. He knows what we know. He can deliver us as we go. And struggle doesn't differentiate from me to you, but all the way down from the pulpit to the pew. We deal with struggle. Some of us mask it with makeup. As Dr. Cornell West said, we deodorize the funk of our issues. We, we perfume our pain. But the Lord knows what we go through and he knows that he can deliver us. And you don't have to take somebody's hand. All you have to do is hold on to God's unchanging hand. And surely this morning as I was musing and meditating about what to pray before the message, I thought about the woman with the issue of blood. Found in the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the Bible said that she was vexed and afflicted for 12 years. She was alive today, Pastor. I think she would have had a starring role in the movie 12 Years a Slave. Because for 12 years she was a slave to her situation. We don't know her name. All we know is her situation. Imagine being known as that's the man who went to prison. That's the woman who was divorced. 
But I love what the Lord does is he looks past our situation and he sees that we're in the right place at the right time in the right season. Because one word from the Lord can say, woman, now I'm loosed. One word from the Lord can say, loose the man and let him go. The woman with the issue of blood didn't touch Jesus, but she touched something that was touching him. She didn't touch H-I-M, but she touched the H-E-M, the hem of his garment, yeah, yeah. and was made whole from that very hour. If you can just touch the Lord today, he'll turn your situation around. The centurion soldier said, Jesus, you ain't even got to come to my crib. Just speak the word and my servant shall be healed. As you look down your road today, you're looking at a miracle. You're looking at somebody who was left for dead through many dangers, toils, and snares, but they're still here. You're looking at somebody today who may not have a million dollars in the bank, but they have a relationship with the Lord that money cannot buy. You're looking at somebody today who may not be able to get into the White House, but they came into the church house with a praise on their lips. Don't just pray for yourself, but pray for that neighbor. Kind and gracious God, we just come to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God, before we ask you for anything, we just come to thank you for everything. Because Jesus, you are our peace, our praise, our presence, and our power. And so move until we get through. Speak until we know it's you. Today, we don't just come to praise you because it's convenient, but we come to praise you because you've been consistent in our lives. Morning by morning, new mercies we're able to see. And so let my tongue be as the pen of a ready writer to write upon the tablets of the hearts of your people. Restore vision today. Bring provision for the vision. Bless this great house. Bless this great church. Bless this great man and the mantle of his ministry. Uh, move us to a greater level. Move this house and these people to a greater level right now and we're claiming joy in the life of my brother today we're claiming a breakthrough in the life of my sister right now devil we serve you notice you are a defeated foe the, the blood of jesus yes. is against you we bind up every attraction and distraction of the enemy and so god flow in this house let your anointing break up every fallow ground right now and we thank you god we don't just come to thank you for what you've done, but today we come to thank you for what you didn't do. We want to thank you for the house we did not lose. We want to thank you for the son that did not go to jail. We want to thank you for the daughter that was not caught up on the street. We want to thank you because the accident did not happen. We come to praise you for all you've done. And so let your people be edified, the devil horrified, and your name glorified in Jesus name come on give God a praise all over this house come on don't just thank him for what he did but thank him for what he did not do you did not leave me you did not wipe me out you didn't turn your back on me Woo. It's a sweet spirit in this place and I know it is the presence of the Lord amen amen Just give me all the monitors you can sound man I don't know what you come to do but I come to praise the Lord I come to clap my hands I come to stomp my feet amen it's good to see you today you may have to reintroduce yourself to somebody before you leave your name may be Jane but you won't leave the same way you came <laughs> My name is Eddie, and right about now, I'm ready for a move of God. Amen. He's worthy of all of our praises. Truly, we do honor the Lord today for his love and saving power. You may be seated, and we give great deference and respect to the leader and the angel of this house, no less person than the indubitable, the indomitable, and the inimitable, Pastor Maurice L. Russ. Come on, somebody give God praise with him. Come on. Come on. Take 21 seconds and praise God for 21 years. And while you're praising God for him, don't forget about her. First Lady LaShawn Rugs. Come on. Don't hate congratulate. Don't hate celebrate. Don't hate appreciate. 
Come on, praise God for 21 years of vision. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Jeremiah 3.15 that God will give you pastors after his own heart. And we have a pastor who has a heart for the least, the last, the lost, the left out, the overlooked, the underserved, and the underrepresented. He has a heart for God, for ministry, and for people. Uh, but I love what the Reverend Jeremiah Wright suggested, that there's nothing wrong with being a copycat. Amen. As long as you know the right cat to copy. Amen. And indeed, and in fact, your pastor is that cat. You ought to give God another praise for him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. To all my fellow yoke servants in the vineyard, to these great ministerial musicians, amen, to... All those in protocol, all those I don't know to call to Lottie Dottie and everybody. <laughs> Amen. I'm y'all gotta forgive me. I'm from the east side. <laughs> Warren and Connor represent. Come on now. Uh, there, there's something uh, powerfully poignant about your pastor and even about Pastor Ring. John Maxwell, one of the leading voices on leadership, said the goal of the pastor is not to get people to show up, but to get people to grow up. Essentially, what is it to have filled pews if the people in the pews remain empty? And there's three levels of listeners in church. There's one level who just wants to know who said it. They, they can't receive unless they know who said it. You know, they tickled by celebrities. There's, there's another level who wants to know how it is said. You know, I need a little hoop on it, throw a little sauce on the meat. Uh, but the most intelligent level of listener they don't care about who said it. They don't care about how it is said. They just want to know what is said. And the reason you keep coming is because of the great word that this pastor has been preaching time and time yes. again. Yes. Which has been life changing. Amen. We thank God. Listen, I need you to do two things for me today. First, I need you to pray for me and with me. Been on the road, but I need you to also just lean over and nudge your neighbor. Come on, tell them how much they owe you for allowing them to sit next to you. Come on, tell them you owe me $50. And in addition to your tithe and offering, you better recognize who you sit next to. You can't replace me. You may want to, re you can't replace me, but you got to know I'm a gift to somebody. I'm a gift to somebody, if, even if I'm a gift all by myself. Amen. In this day and time, we need more than just revelation. More than just information, we need revelation. Laughter is medicine, but I want you to go with me to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. And if it is your custom, you can stand for the reading of the word. I brought some material with me that I know will bless you. You know, there's 66 books in the Bible. I've only written 14 of my own, so i got a long way to go. <laughs> uh, but I'm a living witness. Your test is a testimony. Your misery is a ministry. Your mess is a message. Your stumbling block is a stepping stone. God will use your setback as a setup right. for your greatest comeback. Somebody know you got a testimony in this house. You don't look like you what you've been through. Jesus. Minister Sherrod, I know you know what I'm talking about. 2022 marks 22 years of me being cancer free. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Come on, come on. You ought to praise God. He's still healing. Yes. He had the movie The Color Purple on this screen today. I tell you, just like Sophia, all my life. Uh -huh. I had to fight. Do I got some fighters? You fought through the storm. You fought through the rain. You fought through some heartache and pain. You don't look like what you've been through. Thank you, Jesus. My Bible tells me, Brian, that Psalm 118, 17 says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. So I brought one of my books with me. Where all the queens at today? Every queen. Give another sister three snaps of the neck roll, a hair flip, a high five, three snaps of the neck roll. Tell her, you go, girl. You all that in a bag of Bibles. You all that in a skirt of scriptures. You better go with yourself. You better wear your crown. Queen means quintessentially unique, empowering everyone naturally. Real queens don't compete, they collaborate. Real queens ain't chasing a man, they focus on their purpose and plan. Real queens understand that their royalty demands loyalty. As a result, they wear their crown and they build their queendom in the kingdom of God. And so this is a book that's going to empower you to wear your crown, walk in authority and authenticity. 
And then this is also one of my latest books, The Mask of Masculinity. Mm -hmm. uh, this really speaks to how men can reclaim their identity, lead in love with vulnerability. Pastor, you know they've been telling us to man up ever since we were a child. All right. Stand up, be a man. Stop, stop acting like a girl. Only girls cry. Right. But oftentimes, us as men, we go through life with father wounds, with frailties, with scars that we have to remediate from and that we got to find strength in vulnerability. Being a man is not so much what you got on the outside. It's about how you, you move with your character on the inside. And also, it's a book that teaches our sisters how to create a safe space and place for men to be able to open up and be vulnerable with you. If you have Ephesians 1 and 18, shout, I got it. I got it. Paul is praying here, and here scripture says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You may be seated eyes of your understanding being enlightened. I want to tag this text with this title. I want to preach from the subject, I can see clearly now. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, check your vision. Look, that's the wrong neighbor. Look at the other neighbor. Tell them, I can see clearly now. In 1983, the rock group Survivor penned the song, The Eye of the Tiger, which became the theme song for the movie Rocky III. The movie was about an up-and-coming boxer whose main character was played by Sylvester Stallone. Now, the lyrics of the theme song conveyed, and I quote, it's the eye of the tiger, it's the thrill of the fight rising up to the challenge of our rival. Some of y'all singing it now. And the last known survivor stalks his prey in the night and he's watching us all with the eye of the tiger, unquote. When you talk about a tiger, I'm not talking about Tony the Tiger or the Detroit Tigers. A tiger is an amazing species. You can literally hear its roar from up to two miles away. And if you can hear that, you too close. It measures from head to tail as 12 feet in length. A tiger has the ability to, to leap 20 to 30 feet in one jump. Tigers have padded feet, making it easier to silently stalk their prey. Tigers have the unique ability to see long distances, and they possess three-dimensional perception. However, my dear brothers and sisters, in the midst of all of a tiger's natural abilities, here it is, tigers are born blind. It's interesting that God would create an animal which embodies tenacity and superior abilities, but is born without the ability to see. Brother Preacher, I'm lost in the sauce. What are you trying to say here? Uh, could it be, my dear brothers and sisters, that your greatest strength and achievement comes from what was deficient? It's about discovering the ability in a disability. Power derives from your pain. Simply because sometimes you don't realize how strong you are until being strong is your only option. Lyrics in the song could have easily mentioned the, it's the leap or the roar of the tiger. However, it's the eye that was originally blind, but now can see. Isn't it interesting that much like the tiger, you and I are born spiritually blind to who God has created, crafted, and called us to be. Yes. It, it can take a, a, a few weeks for a tiger to see, but sometimes it takes years for you and I to see the riches of God's glory and the treasure within an earthen vessel that has been placed within us innately. Listen, you've got to understand that you're too unique to compete. You're too rare to compare. God has crafted and chosen you differently and distinctly. That's why you weren't born to fit in. You were created to stand out. My 
Dear brothers and sisters, the tragedy is not in being born blind, but it is that you remain blind to your vision and powerful purpose. You gotta understand right through here, the only thing worse than being blind is being able to see, but having no vision. I'm here to live, give you a living witness and news today. If you're going to rise to a new dimension, you need a renewed vision. And oftentimes the question becomes, how do I see clearly when life has become so blurry? And see, when I get an eye exam, I realize that, that what I'm looking through dictates what I see. Whether I wear my glasses or not, I have sight. I can see the game, but I can't see the score clearly. When I have the right prescription, my sight becomes vision because my eyes are focused. Yeah. And I believe this is the season where God is restoring your vision for provision and leading you to fruition when you're focused on your focus by faith. Yeah. Here is the revelation wrapped in the question. Uh, what, what lens are you looking through for life? What lens of life are you looking through? If you keep looking through the lens of your past, then all you're going to see is negativity. If you keep looking through your tears, then you'll see that life is too blurry to see what's ahead. If you keep looking through your mess, you'll never see the message. I don't know about you, but I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. You got to realize that as long as you have a pulse, you have a purpose. You're not alive by accident. You're, you're here by divine appointment on divine assignment. You were created to live with purpose, on purpose, for purpose, because you have a dynamic purpose. And far too often, you and I have been stifled by the opinions of other people. As a result, their opinions now become our prison. Sometimes we go through life living in a prison without bars because of our past. People's limitations or low expectations from family members. But today is your day to where you got to loose it and let it go. Today is your day where you got to brush your shoulders off. You got to break out of stinking thinking and low level living and say, I refuse to let your negative opinions of me imprison me. I'm breaking out of anxiety. I'm breaking out of depression. I'm breaking out of trauma. I'm breaking out of low level stinking thinking. No weapon formed against me. Oh, I feel it in here. It shall not prosper as sure as you're listening is, is as sure as God is preparing you for what he's prepared for you. You got to know that his plan is greater than the devil's plot because Jeremiah 29 and 11 reminds you and me for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Look at somebody tell them my future is bright. Uh, yeah, I know you're wearing your glasses, but you now you might need to put on some shades because my future is bright. My future is a fruitful vision. What you had to endure just to get to this moment is nothing short of a miracle. Uh, people counted you out, but you're still here by the grace of God. And I would suggest that the vision for your life has kept you alive. Uh, the poorest person is not the one without a dime, it's the one without a dream. Uh, I got to keep my vision alive to get the provision that God has for me. All, all hope was lost and you had every reason to give up, but the vision that God has placed in your spirit is what picked you up out of the miry clay and placed your feet upon a rock to stay. And here's the thing, if you have sight but no vision, you're still blind. Uh, one of the most powerful words that pushes any human being to action is the word vision. Uh, the word is a verb simply because if I have a vision, then I must do something radical by taking action. Uh, don't 
tell me that God don't love you and you just sitting back and you just letting life go past? Why would you live for 75 years and every year that you live be the same? You got to do something different to get something different. Uh, the craziest person is the one who's doing the same thing expecting a different result. And I got to check my mind. I got to check myself before I wreck myself. I got to check my vision because without a vision, the people perish. Uh, look at that neighbor. Tell them, check your vision today. Uh, what is that idea? What is that vision? Because God will turn your contacts to contracts. God will turn your ideas into income. What's the vision that you sitting back and waiting for somebody to co-sign it? I ain't a car. I don't need you to co-sign for me. God gave me a vision and I'm putting it in drive. I'm going to stop staying parked in my purpose. I'm going to stop reversing. But I'm going for Forward, walking by faith. Ah, how long I rebuke the spirit of procrastination over your life. It ain't too late to be great and it's not too early to get started. And some of us are so arrogant because we procrastinate and the arrogance of procrastination conveys that God will give you another chance in the future to do what he instructed you to do today. Uh, but the devil is a lie. God is not on your schedule. You on his schedule. You are on his time. And when he moves, you got to move just like that. Uh, you're not waiting on God. He's waiting on you to seize the moment or you will regret and forfeit your blessing. Uh, how many, how many, how many times have we wasted the blessing because we waiting on people to validate what God already told us to do. Oh, for 21 years, a pastor ignored all the critics and all the cynics to say, God already told me what to do. Because waiting doesn't mean to sit back and relax. It means to work and prepare for what you expect to receive. Because where there is no vision, there is no revelation. And vision is not about eyesight, it's about insight. Vision is simply faith because it reminds me and it requires me to trust God when I can't trace God. It requires me to see beyond what I see and transform my reality. Look at that neighbor, tell him, do you see your vision clearly? Ah, yes, because the Bible says in Hebrews that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And if you can see it, then you don't need the faith for it. Faith illuminates your spirit to see the invisible by expecting God to do the impossible. Faith becomes the gateway that grants your vision to achieve. And what has God placed in your spirit uh, that's insight greater than eyesight? You got to see beyond what you see to transform your reality. I know you work in the natural, but when God adds his super to your natural, things move in a supernatural trajectory. And God will flip the script on the enemy and give you a powerful testimony. You can't allow the enemy to mess with your mentality. Uh, yes, because I can't be transformed. You are not transformed by the renewing of your car lease. You are not transformed by the renewing of your marital vows. I know you like it with your honey and all that jazz. But you're only transformed 
transform by the renewing of your mind. Uh, whether they say a goal, I got to have them hold my mind. Whether the money, it don't matter if I got the money or not. If I don't have the mentality, I can't keep what God gave me. But he'll keep me in perfect peace if I keep my mind staying on up. Uh, just tap yourself. Say, I got to get my mind right. Now, I got to get my mind right. If I get my mind right, my money will be right. If I get my mind right, my relationship and marriage will be right. If I get my mind right, I'll get away from shallow-minded people. If I get my mind right, then I'll step out of the boat uh, and walk on water by faith because I got to get my mind I got to get it on Jesus. I'm almost there. Hold that organ one minute. I'll blow a fuse in this place. Uh, it's your season to aspire higher. You, I got news for you. You can't soar like an eagle if you're hanging with chickens. And too often we got surrounding ourselves with people who are clucking and gossiping and, and sharing empty promises of what they about to do. You ever been around folks who they're always about to do this? I'm about to go to the store. I'm about to get a job. I'm about to get married. I'm about to get my life right. And when they don't about to do nothing, see what had happened was. I know that ain't none of y'all. Let me testify to myself. They flapping their wings and, and barely get off the ground because of the issues that are weighing them down. And eagles like chickens or birds both have wings. However, eagles take flight and soar above average to do the amazing. Just look at that neighbor and ask him today, are you an eagle? Uh -huh. I, know I, I know you like big chicken. I know you like fried chicken, but they ain't cooking no eagles. Uh -huh. Because eagles make their nest in the mountains. They venture into high altitudes. And what different Appreciates the bird is that when he Eagles are, are different than any bird because when every other storm comes around, they don't fly in the crowd. They soar on their own. Why do you need a cosigner for what God told you? Eagles make their nest in the mountains. They live on another level. And then what eagles do is that eagles embrace storms. When every other bird flies away from the storm, the eagle gets happy because the eagle uses the storm and soars into the storm to go higher. I just came to let somebody know today, my dear brother and my dear sister, it's time to use the storm to go higher. Uh, I'm on a mission with my vision. I can't go around it. I can't go around it. I can't go above it. But this time, I got to go through it. But look at that neighbor. Tell him SOS. Tell them, scoot over some, because I'm getting ready to spread my wings and soar to another level. Stop telling God how big your storm is, and start telling your storm how big your God is, because I can see clearly now in the eye of the storm, because God is guiding me through what I'm going through. I may be crying, but weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. I'm drying my eyes to see through what I go through. I'm going through that storm of sickness. I'm so above that storm of sadness. I'm soaring above the storm of suffering in silence. Uh, if you don't get it, you got to go through it. And as you go through it, you're going to grow through it. Look at that neighbor today and tell him, I can see clearly now. Uh, tell them I can see clearly that your blessing is coming. I 
can see clearly that next year you'll be better than where you are now. I can see clearly that in the next four months, God's going to flip the scripts that this year is still going to be the best year yet. Look at that neighbor, tell him, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Ah, oh, God, what God is getting ready to do in your life. Ah, oh, yes, because your not yet is greater than your right now. I just want to test your faith today. I want to test to see, ah, oh, yes, if your faith is positive. I want to test to see, because when you have faith, you don't say if, you say when. You don't say if I get blessed, but you say when I get blessed. When you got faith, you don't say if I'm going to be a millionaire, but you say when I become a millionaire. When you got faith, you don't say if our church will survive, but you say when our church thrives. Uh, do I got some real no limit fake soldiers in the house uh, that I speak over? Over your life uh, that your finances will not be thick off. I speak over every place of inflation that you coming out of the devastation. I speak over every place of sickness and sadness that you coming out as pure gold. I speak over your life that your family will be blessed. That your vision will come come to fruition because your words create your world what you speak into the atmosphere will appear your confession dictates your possession on your future your future or your funeral is on the tip of your tongue because the bible said death and life are in the power of the tongue and i just want to ask you a question today because when somebody asks you, do you have it, you don't say no, you say not yet. Oh uh, God, I got to get up on out of here now. Uh -huh. It's not that you will never be a millionaire, you're just not a millionaire. Oh uh, God, I think you got it. It's not that you won't manifest the vision, you just haven't manifested it yet. It's not that you won't get the scholarship. You just didn't get the scholarship yet. It's not that you won't be married. You just ain't married yet. Do you have the job? I don't have it yet. Do you have the husband? You ain't got him yet. Do you have the promotion? You didn't receive it yet. Because not yet is it not existing reality that's coming to fruition but when I'm in step with God my not yet becomes my right now oh God I just come to let somebody know today that your next is about to happen now I know you went through a lot of struggle to where it seems as if life kept you a dollar short and a day late You've been the least, the last, the left out, the overlooked, the underserved, and the underrepresented. The only thing that never came late in your life was struggle. Struggle came early. Can I testify one minute? Struggle came early when my best friend uh, was diagnosed with cancer at the age of seven and died. Struggle commenced early. Eight years later when I found myself fighting for my life after being diagnosed with stage 4 cancer can I talk about struggle today struggle came early as I missed my entire sophomore year of high school because I was too sick to attend struggle came early 
early when my parents divorced and I had to cope with the absence of a father. The struggle came early and often when my father never visited me one day in the hospital, losing all my hair, my self-confidence, and my self-esteem. Some of us had to learn how to juggle struggle. Now when the people who you thought were praying for you were just praying on you, sitting on the sideline expecting your demise, not just stabbing you in the back, but stabbing you in the face, they were the OJs, nothing but backstabbers. Struggle came early when I reconnected with a peer who inconvenienced me in a convenience store. Didn't even walk up and say what up Dolph But he said I thought you died Struggle came early When I got rejected from colleges And barely got admitted to Eastern Michigan on probation Struggle came early Can I preach to somebody in this house When I had to drop out of college Because of lack of finances Do I got some people Who had to learn how to juggle struggle. Now, despite the setback, you're here today. You made it out because of two words, but God. Oh, God. Sick, but God. Abandoned, but God. Divorced, but God. Talked about, but Lied on, but God lost your job, but God, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, oh God, I wouldn't be here today. I'm through lecturing now, but I feel like having some church. I feel like having a little bit of church in here because I'm looking at a champion today. After all that you're going through, pastor has a plaque. He's got a picture of Muhammad Ali hanging up on a wall in his office. And Muhammad Ali said that the canvas is no place for a champion. I know you've been knocked out, but you're not knocked out. Because a knockdown is not a knockout unless you stay down and you've got to get back up and rise, pick up your bed and walk. Because I heard him when he said that your vision is coming to fruition. That John 2 and 28 said that it shall come to pass afterward. That I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. You ought to just lift your hands today and receive it. That your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Have you seen anything yet? Ask that neighbor today. Have you seen anything yet? Have you seen your vision? Because I heard Paul when he prayed that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened to know what is the hope. Look at that neighbor today. Tell him I know you've been down, but do you have just a little hope? Do you have just a little hope that you're coming out of this situation because he's got a calling on your life that your election is sure i've been through enough suffering but he sustained me i was crying when they walked out but he lifted me up 
was down, but he made me part as a joint heir of Jesus Christ. I'm not just an heir, but I'm a joint heir. That means every blessing is mine. Every joy is mine. Check your spiritual bank account. You ain't in the red. You ain't bankrupt. But you're blessed and highly favored. Favor is on your life. Do you see your purpose? Do you see your promise? Do you see your possibility? Do you see your joy? For this joy that I have, no one. didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away you can't take my joy you can't take my blessing in the name of Jesus is mine take back your son take back your house take back your community take back your children tell that neighbor as quickly as you're blinking is as fast as the blessing is coming. Tell that neighbor, blink one time. Because eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard what he's got, what God is getting ready to do for you. Because I heard the songwriter say, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Look at that neighbor, tell him I see me. I see my joy, I see my peace. one more. Can I borrow one more? You've got to know today that God's going to give you vision. He's adjusting your vision. He's adjusting your power. Tell him I see my blessing. Tell that neighbor I see my overflow. Tell that neighbor I see my restoration. Tell that neighbor you coming out. Pull on that neighbor today. Tell them, come out. You got too many gifts in you. You got too much power in you. Because they crucified him. I heard when they said he was hung up from my hangups. They hung him high. They stretched Jesus wide. But early one Sunday morning, he got up with all power. Come on, Pastor. There's no secret what God can do. What He's done for others, He will do the same for you. Tell that neighbor, be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will. God will. Come on, take 21 seconds and praise God for 21 years of vision. Come on, praise Him like you're being restored. Praise Him like you're being empowered. Praise Give him a praise. Praise him like you're coming out. Praise him like the miracle is yours. Praise
season because it's your season of overflow. Give God praise, give Him glory. Give Him praise, give Him glory. Come on. If you got vision today, you ought to praise God for your vision. You ought to praise God for what He allowed you to see. us in the Lord, letting us know we walk by faith and not by human sight. Hallelujah. Anybody here got a vision for their life? Hallelujah. Anybody got a vision for their future? You ought to give it praise. You ought to give it praise. You ought to give it the glory. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you so much, Dr. Connor. Give God some praise for this man of God. Hallelujah. I feel a praise in the building. Oh, I feel a praise in the building. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be, blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We ought to have a praise for our future. We ought to have a praise for what God is doing for us. Doing for us right now. Stand to your feet. The doors of the church are open. Maybe somebody here today says, I need a redemptive revelation. I need a redemptive plan for my life. Things are not going my way. Things are not the way that they should be. But I know somebody who could put me on the right track. I know somebody who says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh into relationship with the Father, but by me. We extend to you now the invitation to Christian discipleship. Those in the sanctuary, I want you to come and talk to me right after service. Those who, are, who want to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, come and talk to me. I want to introduce you to Jesus. Those of us online, amen, I want you to reach out to us by way of email. You can be an e-member. I've got a lot of e-members. Shout out to my e-members out there, my electronic mountain movers. Thank God for you. But you can reach out to us by email, and we can give you all the information you need. We can connect you to Jesus. Hallelujah. So that you can begin to grow and begin to, begin to build on the foundation that God has laid for you. Amen. Demetrius is going to come and render a song as we contemplate our salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise, give Him glory. What a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We pray to God that somebody online got saved. And those in this sanctuary, please, please come and talk to me right after service. Amen. I want to introduce you to Jesus. I want to introduce you to the life changer, the life mechanic. Hallelujah. He can put your life back together again. We're witnesses, we're witnesses, all of us are witnesses that he has put us, put us back together again, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you so much, Dr. Connor. Give God some praise and glory to him. What an what a awesome, awesome, awesome word, amen. Uh, definitely don't want, to, want you to forget Dr. Connor has resources available, all that good stuff he talked about. Amen. You can get it in these volumes. These are just two books that he has, but he has a number of books. And amen. We're going to make sure, Doc, you got a space, a space so you could, amen, be able to get this information out, out to the people. Amen. We've had an awesome, awesome time today. Somebody say vision. Somebody say vision. Hallelujah. We had an awesome, awesome time today. And Amen. And it always brings me joy just to revisit what God has for us. And I want to let you know, Greater Mount Tabor, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and neither has it been revealed in the hearts of men the things that God has in store for us. We're working on some things right now, working on some groundbreaking things that shall come to pass and not only be a blessing for this church, but be a blessing for for this entire community. I want you to be a part of it. I want you to get involved and be a part of bringing, amen, God's vision, God's vision to pass. Amen. We get ready to sign off, but before we sign off, I want to ask you a question. What time is it? What time is it? Amen. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Well, he loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. Our giving scripture is found in Malachi 3. 8, 9, and 10, and the scripture says this, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed me? In tithes and in offering. You are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, so that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, it would say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive it. Malachi 3, 8, 9, and 10. Let us bow our heads. Father, we thank you so much for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. And then, Lord, we thank you for being a light in dark places. Lord, we thank you for being a hope for us when we were hopeless. Lord, we thank you for being faith for us when we were faithless. And so, Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, that you placed in our hearts, you placed in our minds a plan for the future. And Lord, as long as we got a plan, Father, we know everything's going to be all right. I heard your word said that when there is no vision, the people perish. And so, Lord, we thank you for a plan. We thank you for redemptive revelation. We pray now, Lord, that you would cause us to be excited, that you would cause us to be empowered by the vision. And Lord, that we would run, run after the vision, Lord, and not only be hearers of the word, but then also doers. Lord, we thank you for the givers today. Lord, we thank you for those who have seed today to plant in the fertile ground. And then, Lord, we pray for those who have no seed. Lord, that you would teach us, teach us good stewardship principles about how to put good seed in good ground and reap a good harvest. We thank you, Father, for the increase that is on the way. Father, thank you right now for the blessings, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold according to their faith. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let every heart say amen.
and thank God. Those in the sanctuary, our officers are coming by to receive your gifts. Those online, we want you to look up our church, find Givelify, find that Givelify app, you'll see Great Amount Tabor, you'll see my face on there, amen. And uh, we find my face on there, find a dollar amount that suits you, no dollar amount too large, no dollar amount too small, find the dollar amount that suits you, and then on the count of three, we're going to go ahead and give, we're going to go ahead and give together, blessed be Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank God for the ability to give. Lord, you're so good. You, you're so merciful. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. I want y'all to count it with me. I want y'all to count it with me on the count of three. Somebody say one, two, three. Give. Hallelujah. Blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Giving ought to be a celebratory thing. Hallelujah. For what God has done for all of us, giving ought to be, amen, a celebratory thing. And we thank God, hallelujah, we thank God for your giving, amen. We're getting ready to go. We had an awesome time in the Lord. Uh, my brother, Devante Sherrod is in the house. Uh, uh, Sherrod, you running in November? Amen. Give God praise and glory. Devontae Sherrod, amen. Uh, you still councilman until, amen, councilman of e right? e amen. City councilman of e -course. Thank God. You're a bad brother, man. I won't let you know that. You're a bad brother. Because I remember, I remember when you said you were going to run. Amen. And eyes had not seen, ears had not heard. I remember you said you were going to run, and you got it together, and you ran, and you won. Amen. You ran, and you won. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But I want to let you know, so God has something in store for you, Doc. He's going to take you to another height. Amen. You had one term or two terms? Yes, sit council. Amen. Pray God got something else for you, Doc. Two terms. He said, you did enough in that capacity. Now nah, he won't take you to some, take you to somewhere else. Amen. Mark my words, Doc. Mark, mark my words. And if I could be any help to you, brother, uh, let me know. Amen. Devontae Sherrod, y'all give God a hand and, and a praise. And a praise. Amen for him. Also, I want to let you know, we partnered with the University of Michigan to get information out about the COVID-19 uh, vaccine. And also... Uh, all this other stuff coming out, y'all, we don't need information about vaccines. And I want y'all to uh, just go to g2ymi.org. G2ymi.org. Audio video, I want y'all to one day put that on the screen. Next Sunday, have that on the screen for me. G2ymi.org. Amen. I want you to go there. Amen. And uh, register. And then when you register, I want you to go ahead. Great Amount Tabor has a special code, has a special code, 1251, 1251, 1251. It's going to ask you a few questions, but go ahead and put that special code in there, 1251, and you're going to get information tailor-made for our community, tailor-made for Great Amount, Great Amount Tabor. The big shout out to you of them. Amen. And my good friend, Pastor Charles Williams, for spearheading this effort. And we thank God for all of them. Go next to Dr. Connor. Amen. We'll come back for the last remarks and then the benediction. Amen. Give God some praise and some glory for him as he comes. God, give God praise again for your pastor. Come on. Come on. You can do better than that. Amen. Did somebody receive a word? Did your vision get set on fire today? Yes. Come on. I said, did your vision get yes. set on fire? Yes, yes. I'm so grateful, so grateful, and glad for what God has done in this house. Why don't you stand with me as we get ready to dismissed but not from God's presence so grateful for my homeboys being here Minister Sherrod God bless you for it, for your attendance today and of course my homeboy my brother from another mother uh, Brian I'm so glad that you're here as well today I appreciate it. it's good to have brothers in the bond isn't it yes 
Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Let's look to the Lord. Kind and gracious Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen. We thank you for what our ears have heard. Lord, we thank you for your provision for our vision. We thank you that this week is our week to win. We thank you, God, that this marks the rest of our year. Moving forward by faith. We're not walking by sight, but we're walking by the insight and the revelation of what you have given us. So bless us now. Cover and protect us by your blood. Keep us safe. We come against harm and danger. We come against the enemy. We thank you, God, that you'll do something odd in our life this week. Make our enemies bless us. Do something odd this week. Cancel every day. Do something odd this week. Despite the doctor's report, we believe your report. So we declare and decree that we have the victory. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Yes. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and grant you peace. Yes. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you his grace. Yes. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior. The glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let all the people sing together. Oh, oh man. God bless you. I love you. Thank you. 